Welcome to Pertech Learn. Today we'll be looking at MEM 09003 Prepare Basic Engineering Drawings. Welcome to the lecture. This lecture is a supplement to your student workbook and other resources made available to you. As a professional engineering tradesperson, reading and producing mechanical drawings are critical to your day to day professional activities. As an engineering tradesperson, it's important to have access to good reference materials, whether it be a textbook, machinery's handbook, manual for engineering drawing, hydraulic standards handbook. Nobody can remember everything. And it's important that we have access to current, reliable reference material to make sure that we can get the job done efficiently and quickly. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the tools and processes involved in creating a basic engineering drawing. What is an engineering drawing? Let's have a look at the official definition. The definition of an engineering drawing is the art of drawing a picture of something that can be measured. You'll have to agree, some engineering drawings are works of art. We can liken an engineering drawing to a form of visual communication. Though primitive by today's standards, ancient cultures as far as back as the early Egyptians had developed methods for visually communicating building or mechanical designs. Keep in mind, some of those uh, pyramids were quite complex and you know, the majority of people couldn't read or write. So they used a visual form of communication to relay ideas on block sizes and dimensions and assembly instructions and measurements and so on. It was Mark Isambard Brunel who proposed the first standardized engineering drawing. He was one of the great engineers of the Industrial Revolution and just happens to be the father of Isenbach Kinderbrunel, one of the greatest engineers in history. What is a standard? What is generalized standardization? Let's have a look at the uh, textbook definition of a standard. A standard can be thought of as an agreed upon norm used by people industry and government that outlines the best way to complete a task, whether it's about developing a product, providing a service, controlling a process or interacting with the world. Well, what they're saying is if we make things to a recipe or a standard, nuts, for example, made by one company will fit bolts made by another company because they're both using the same standard or recipe to make that component. Proposed standardization around the uh, Industrial Revolution saw the birth of machine tools. Here we have pictured a screw cutting machine or a screw cutting lathe for producing nuts and bolts. Here we have a picture of some pre Industrial Revolution uh, nuts and bolts. Imagine having to forge, file and chisel every single nut and bolt by hand. Without standardization and automation, the industrial revolution and the industrialization would have not been possible. It's not surprising that there's a standard for creating engineering drawings. The Australian standard is AS1100. AS1100 is a drawing standard that is used within Australia. It defines every aspect of the drawing. AS1100 provides a standard that allows for clarity, understanding and uniformity across all drawings generated nationwide. This AS1100 standard didn't just pop out of the blue. It's mapped back to the International Standard Organizations, which is an international organization that ensures that you know, drawings, irrespective of where they're created, can be read irrespective of what language the person speaks. 
If you're going to be creating engineering drawings, it's a good idea to have access to the Australian standards. These can be purchased from www.standards.org.au. You can get them in hard copy or soft copy. Other reference books are also of, uh, handy. Uh, publications like the Machinery's Handbook, uh, other good drawing textbooks are also a good resource for when creating uh, engineering drawings. How do organisations ensure that they're uh, adhering to Australian standards? Organisations will create a document called the Standard Operating Procedure, which is basically a series of steps or a formula to do something like uh, create an engineering drawing or you know, create or manufacture a uh, replacement hydraulic hose. There are a series of operations and steps to be performed to get the job done. Let's have a look at the engineering drawing. An engineering drawing is a type of technical drawing that is used to fully and clearly define requirements for engineered items. Before we start creating an engineering drawing, we need, let's ask ourselves some questions. Question one, what type of drawing equipment will I be using? Question two, what type of information does the maker require? Question three, what are the standard requirements for this drawing? And question four, what media do I have available? We'll have a look at each one of these questions in uh, some detail. What equipment do I have available? We'll be looking at uh, three methods for creating a technical drawing. Method number one, hand sketching. Method number two, manual drafting. And method number three, CAD, computer aided design. Listen, it's important that you become familiar with all three methods and you'll be exposed to them in one form or another during your professional career. Firstly, we'll look at hand sketching. Freehand sketching in engineering is primarily used for describing concepts or communicating ideas, usually used in meetings or brainstorming sessions or you know, ideas scribble on the back of uh, you know, napkins or envelopes and so forth. It's also commonly used in breakdown situations in remote locations where you have to quickly create a drawing and give it to the local machine shop uh, so you can get things made quickly, especially if you don't have access to the internet or your CAD or to your drawing equipment. The challenge of a hand sketch is to clearly describe the critical features and avoid communication and misunderstanding. You remember, you need to provide all the information needed to make the part in the case of an emergency breakdown. Manual drafting. This is the use of protractors and T-squares and drawing boards and uh, various uh, grades of pencils and so forth. The advent of uh, CAD computer design is basically uh, uh, superseded the need for uh, you know, manual drafting skills. Yes, it's still important to know how to use these tools. Pictured, we have a traditional uh, drawing board with built-in rule, square, protractor, and so forth. Nowadays, we take printers and photocopiers and desktop printing for granted. Not that long ago, reproducing documents meant complex processes and numerous and sometimes dangerous chemicals. Everybody's heard the term blueprint. It was invented in 1842. For a drawing to be copied, it was first drawn on translucent paper, then placed against paper sensitized with a mixture of chemicals. The sensitized paper is then exposed to light. The resulting print would be blue, hence the term blueprint. Uh, very similar to how they used to uh, develop old film and photos. CAD software. What is CAD? CAD is computer-aided design, the use of a computer-based software program to the aid in designing and drawing process. CAD software is commonly used by many different industries and professions. Look, if you're new to CAD, a great place to start is using FreeCAD. It's powerful, relevant, and free. 
the website is down at the bottom of the slide and it's at the end of the presentation. CAD software is particularly handy these days because we can, we can go from a 3D model straight to an orthographic model or a 2D uh, drawing of the, uh, the component. CAD software is also commonly used for creating parts lists, assemblies and 3D models. Well, let's go to question two. What type of information is required on the drawing? Do I need to create a parts or assembly drawing? What type of views and projections do I need to put on the drawing? What other details, quantities, materials, tolerances are required? What information do I need to provide on an engineering drawing? An engineering drawing must contain all the information necessary to produce the component with the minimum of ambiguity or confusion. When creating an engineering drawing, considerations must be given to the person making the component, the makeability of the component and the available manufacturing technologies. Ask yourself some questions. Does the maker have all the information they need? Have I dimensioned the engineering drawing in a way so the maker will not have to perform calculations to derive the most basic information? A handy tip, many engineering drawings have the statement, if in doubt, ask, written on them. Making assumptions could be disastrous. If the maker is unsure of anything, they should check with the author or the issuer of the drawing for clarification. How and why do we display information? How we display drawing information is determined by the Australian Drafting Standard AS1100. This guarantees that all relevant and critical information can be displayed in a standard format and location. Imagine the chaos of everybody did their own thing. This was the case in the early days of the Industrial Revolution where everybody made their own hardware, nuts, bolts, spanners, etc. Nobody understood each other's drawings and so forth. Here we have an example of standardization during the Industrial Revolution. Everybody's heard of the Whitworth thread. The Whitworth thread was the world's first national screw thread standard devised and specified by Joseph Whitworth in 1841. Let's have a look at how we lay out our engineering drawing. First, we'll have a look at the drawing frame and size, uh, the drawing area, and then the title block. The drawing area is basically dictated by the page size. In Australia, we use the ISO standard uh, page sizes. We're all familiar with uh, A4 and A3 page sizes. And these relate back to our drawing area because we relatively want to have some type of scale control on our drawing. The drawing area is basically where the part is located on the sheet. The layout or projection is determined by the standard. Here we have pictured a third angle projection where we have the part positioned in a certain way on the drawing sheet. Here we have a front, back and side view. And this is a third angle projection, which we'll have a look at in a bit of detail in the next few slides. Orthographic projection. This is basically when we take a part, or for example, a, a box, we unfold it, lay it flat on the table. This is what we would call orthographic projection. Once we've laid out our box or part on the table or the, or the uh, drawing area, how we label the views is what's called the type of projection. There's two main types of projection we'll be looking at, first angle projection and third angle projection. Third angle projection is quite simple. We basically just unfold our part and label the views as we see them. We have a top view, bottom view, left and right view and back view. 
first angle projections similar to third angle projection. We still unfold the box and lay it out on our drawing area, but we swap the views. So left will become right, right will come left, bottom will become top, and top will become bottom. First and third angle projections are the most common projection types in engineering drawings. Most of the world uses third angle projection, apart from Europe, which uses first angle projection as their standard. Sometimes we can't display all the features of a part by just drawing all the standard views. Sometimes we need to create section views, basically cut away sections showing hidden or internal details or features. Do not scale is a common message on many drawings. Basically, even though a scale is specified on a drawing, do not measure the part directly against the drawing. Navigation marks. Navigation marks are also common on engineering drawings. They enable the location of key components from materials lists. For example, the location of the nut is at location 2E. The drawing area will contain dimensions and specific tolerances. Specific instructions like fillet sizes and finishes can sometimes be included in the drawing area also. Some common comments that you'll see are remove all sharp edges, do not scale, if in doubt ask. Here's another example of a generic chamfer size Chamfers unless specified, 0.5 millimetres TYP, which stands for typical or unless otherwise specified. Tolerancing. Dimensional tolerance, which is commonly referred to as a dimensional accuracy, is the amount of permitted variance in the dimension of a part. This involves setting a maximum and minimum dimension limit for the part. Let's have a look at unilateral tolerancing. This is the deviation from a nominal size, but only in one direction. Here we have a nominal size of 15 millimeters plus 0.1 millimeter minus zero. So we have a unilateral tolerance. This can be specified as a plus or minus value next to the nominal size, or uh, we can have a situation where we have the bottom and top size specified. Bilateral, bilateral tolerancing is the deviation from nominal size in both directions. Here we have a nominal size of 15 millimeters plus 0.1 millimeter minus 0.1 millimeter. And that can be displayed in two ways, uh, having a plus and minus tolerance next to the nominal size, or we have the top and bottom size specified. In this particular example, Critical tolerances have been specified on the drawing. The dimension without tolerances will be dealt with the general tolerance specified in the title block. In this example, the 20 millimeter hole circled at the bottom has a unilateral tolerance stated on the drawing. The tolerance on the 75 millimeter distance circled on the left will be derived from the tolerance section on the title block. And in the title block, that 75 millimetres will have a plus or minus 0.15 millimetres in both directions, which that will be a bilateral tolerance. Sometimes the tolerance will be specified as an alphanumeric value from a limits and fits chart. This chart will be available online or you can uh, look it up in your copy of the Machinery's Handbook if you have one. In this example, we have a 20 millimeter H9 tolerance specified on the drawing. So the nominal size is 20 millimeters, and we look up the H9 uh, value on the chart, and our new unilateral tolerance will be 20.062 millimeters and 20.00 millimeters. Okay, the 62 is micrometers. So it's 0 0.062 millimetres, plus, zero, minus.
In our example, the H9 tolerance refers to a clearance fit on our limits and fits chart. If you're not sure what type of fit to specify on your drawing, again, reference it in your machinery's handbook. The title block. The title block is an area of the drawing that contains header type information about the drawing, like the drawing title, the drawing number, part numbers, name of the activity, the, the company's logo, organization's logo, etc. The title block also contains information on who created the drawing, who checked the drawing, what revision, what version number it is, when was it issued. The total block also contains information on the type of projection. We already had a look at that. The material and the surface finish. If we have a look at this particular uh, specification here, cast steel. Oh, there's about 40 different grades of cast steel. In this situation, we haven't given the maker enough information. Again, this is where the if in doubt ask message on the drawing will come in handy. This will prompt the maker to contact you for clarification. Here we have the generic universal tolerances. These are the tolerances that you use if they're not specified on the main drawing. And here's an example referencing the drawing standard in the title block. Geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, GDNT. There are other types of information that we need to provide the maker, things like straightness, flatness, uh, position accuracy, concentricity, surface finish, symmetry. Again, these are some of the symbols that you'll come across or use when you're creating a engineering drawing. Here we have an example of uh, regular tolerancing combined with geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. In this example, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing have been used to specify critical features of the drawing. For example, perpendicularity, position tolerance, and we have the traditional types of tolerancing also. We have examples of bilateral tolerance and unilateral tolerance. And there's even a generic uh, tolerance that you have to refer to the title block for, for in the case of the 42 millimeter uh, distance between the holes. The next question is, what are the standard requirements for the drawing? Sheet size, fonts and layouts, minimum information that I need to provide on that drawing. Standard sheet size. Laser printer and large format printers are now commonplace. In Australia, the ISO sheet size is the standard, A4 and A3 being the most popular size for desktop printing. Other considerations when creating an engineering drawing to AS1100. Font size and type of lettering and abbreviations. There are standard fonts and font sizes that are proportional to the drawing. Line types and styles. Line thicknesses and type of line are determined by their purpose and location. Dimension lines and arrows, dependent on location, purpose and size and scale of drawing. Let's review the minimum information that you need to provide on an engineering drawing. Engineering drawings need to communicate information that is legally binding by providing a specification. Remember, an engineering drawing is a legal contract. Engineering drawings therefore need to meet standard requirements, AS 1100. Engineering drawings should be unambiguous and clear. For any part of a component, there must be only one interpretation. That means whoever reads the drawing 
whatever language they speak, they come to the same conclusion. Question four, what media is available? Paper, electronic drawings. Do I have to supply parts lists? What version control system do I have in place? What media do I have available? Does the customer require a printed hard copy of the engineering drawing? Or do they require an electronic version of some type? Paper sizes, A4 to A0 are the common engineering drawing sizes specified by AS1100. 80 GSM copy paper is the most common grade of uh, hard copy paper used for engineering drawings. Electronic media and file formats. Each CAD software has its own proprietary file format. People or companies use different software for many reasons, like cost, tradition, features, familiarity, etc. You may want to share your 3D or 2D CAD designs with your customer or network for editing or CAM computer-aided manufacturing processing. CAD file formats generally fall into two categories, either native, which is proprietary, or neutral, which are shareable file format. In this case, both your software and the recipient software should understand the file format. This is where neutral file formats like IGES, STEP, SDL come into play. Sometimes you want to share your files as a read only. The PDF file is another form of electronic drawing. It can be easily produced and due to its optimized file size convenient for electronic transfer and is protected from alteration. PDF files can be password and copy protected. Parts lists can sometimes be included on the engineering drawing. Here's an example of a parts list. And on the right hand side, we have a parts list with a parts mapping uh, location. So for example, part nine is located at location A5. Modern CAD software enable dynamic listing of parts for here, for example, to a spreadsheet where parts can be dynamically updated and listed with a plug-in spreadsheet function. Version control. In engineering, version control is a process responsible for managing changes to CAD drawings. Changes are usually identified by a version number or an issue date. Become familiar with your internal version control system as using an old obsolete drawing version could have disastrous consequences. Remember, if in doubt, ask. PConnect is a great resource with an extensive library of manuals, drawing, SOPs, SWIMS documents, and risk assessments. Make sure you check out the available resources on your PConnect account. Here we have some uh, links to FreeCAD, Standards Australia, Machinery's Handbook and uh, Manual of Engineering Drawing mentioned in the, in the presentation. Again, check with your local uh, bookshop or favourite online uh, bookstore for uh, the best deals on those.